Hello, 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 family. This is R.C. Blakes, and I am so thoroughly excited. I'm excited because Queenology 2024 is coming back to Atlanta, Georgia, August the 23rd through the 25th. The host hotel is going to be the Whitley Hotel. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Women are literally coming from around the world. It is a multicultural, multi-generational, multi-racial movement of women from around the world. And I want to invite you and yours to meet Lisa and I in Atlanta, Georgia at the Whitley Hotel, August the 23rd through the 25th for Queenology. For those that have the Royal Court package, it will afford you your entire stay for the weekend. It will also afford you a private formal dinner with Lisa and I to open Queenology up. It also affords you admission to every event, everything that's happening for the entire weekend. Now we also have the Saturday brunch and intensive uh, package which allows you to get into the brunch where Lisa and I will be sharing the messages that God has given us for 2024 to share with the ladies. This year I'll have my own message and Lisa will also have her very own message. It's going to be powerful. During the Saturday brunch and intensive, we're also going to have a very distinguished panel of men that are going to sit before the queens and answer the questions that women have always wanted to ask men. It's going to be amazing. Now, also those that are part of the VIP experience, there will be a time where Lisa and uh, the ladies will gather uh, in what they call, I think, the pajama party. And it will be a time where women will have conversation among women. I'm really excited about the culmination of Queenology this year because none other than the incomparable Dave Hollister is coming to be a part of our closing event, the All White Party. He's going to sing the Queenology theme song as well as entertain the ladies, the queens for that evening. Queenology 2024 promises to be like none other. Those of you that want information, if you desire to be a vendor, queenology.net. Those of you that may need payment plans, queenology.net. Let nothing stop you from making your way to Queenology 2024 in Atlanta, Georgia this year. Tickets are going very quickly. I would love for you to meet us in Atlanta, August the 23rd through the 25th. Queens from around the world are coming. Queens from around the world are rising. It is going to be a coronation. It is going to be a crowning. Hello, this is R.C. Blakes once again coming to you and uh, just excited to be alive, excited to be able to address my community once again on this Monday night. You know, Monday nights are my favorite time uh, of the week because I get a chance to share with people from all around the world, literally. What a blessing that is. Now, please invite others to come in and to be a part of this 
conversation tonight, which is going to be very, very, very helpful. Um, one of the things that I'm called upon a lot to talk about is relationships. And I get it. You know, I get it. Uh, I'm a man that has failed a lot at relationships a long time ago. And now I'm a man that has had great success in my marriage for 30 years in October. So I get why some people want to hear what I have to say. Ironically, other people countered against me that I've been married for 30 years. So they say, well, since I've been married, I don't, I can't know much about dating. The reality is, um, Tony Gaskins, Gaskins really said it best. Um, the principles of doing a great relationship have not changed. They have, they have not changed. The same principles that worked in the Garden of Eden are the principles that will work today. A man got to be a man, a woman got to be a woman. The two got to come together. They got to be on the same page in unity. They got to love and respect one another, and they got to work and move in the same direction. Principles are still the same. So based on, based on you know, the world's uh, clamoring for anything relational and uh, by there being so much horrible information, maybe I should say misinformation, on the internet, in particularly um, YouTube and Instagram. I, I suppose it's all over the others as well. I decided to deal with this today. How to build a meaningful connection with another person or with a partner. How does a, a woman build a meaningful connection with the right guy? How does a man build a meaningful connection with the right woman? Now, here's the interesting thing that I want us to think about as I, you know, lead into this. Building a connection, building a relational connection be it a respectful, um, exclusive relationship between a man and a woman or vice versa. Building a connection is a multifaceted process that involves understanding one's self and the other person involved. No wonder the Bible says, to the husband that he should dwell with the wife according to knowledge, knowledge of himself and knowledge of his wife because meaningful connections are based on, built on knowledge, not infatuation, not hormonal excitement, not desperation because the the clock is ticking. You feel like you've hit the wall. Meaningful relationships are built on knowledge. Now, everything, when you think of it now, everything positively human is based on building. Cities have to what? Be built. Cities don't just pop up. Careers have to what? Careers have to be built. Great careers are built. Finances have to be what? Built. And the list goes on and on and on to the break of dawn. Now, how is it that we understand probably the most educated generation ever, if not formally educated, absolutely more knowledgeable because of the internet. 
How is it that we have so much knowledge and we understand that everything meaningful to humanity has to be built, but yet we don't understand that relationships that are meaningful and productive will have to be built. If, if you ever want to shut an audience down of women uh, that may have paid a, a great price to come into a meeting to get wisdom from people who've been there and done that, all you have to say is, Sisters, you're going to have to build with your man. Oh, I ain't building with him. I'm not building. He better come ready made. Okay. Did your job, did your career come ready made? The city you live in, did it come ready made? The house you live in, did it come ready made? Somebody had to build it. And the most important institution known to man is the relationship between a husband and his wife. Everything else in society is, is standing on the foundation of the husband and the wife. Even the church comes second to the family, and yet we lack the wisdom to understand that relationships must be built. Meaningful connections must be built. Now, it's not, it's not my fault or anybody else's fault that you took all of your good material and you brought it and you dumped it on the site of a scam artist in the past. You can't deny the, the, the new contractor the material he needs to construct the house you say you want because a a previous contractor ran off with your money and ran off with the material, never built the house. You just approach it now with a greater wisdom. You make certain that all your I's are dotted, all your T's are crossed. But the reality is this thing still has to be built. Great relationships are always built. There's no ready-made man. There's no ready-made woman. He may be a six or seven figure earner. He's going to still have to build and you're going to have to build with him in terms of the relationship. Now, when you think about it, uh, relationships are built through self-awareness. Um, time takes time to build a great relationship or a great connection. Uh, knowledge commitments it takes time to build a commitment and ultimately great relationships are built on what mutual trust in fact about it the reason you say i'm not building with no man is because you still have some self awareness you got to deal with you you have you have issues you've not processed personal issues that prevent you from trusting. Any woman that says, I'm not building with a man, is, is broken. Her trust muscle is broken, and probably for good reason. But you got to be wise enough. You have to have enough self-awareness to recognize that I do feel this way, but feeling this way is not the right way for me to feel. It's kind of like a, a pain showing up in your body. You recognize that the pain is there, but you go to the doctor because you know your body's not supposed to feel that way. Well, emotionally, you may feel like, I ain't building with no man. I don't trust no man. Well, you, you don't just settle in that feeling. You got to be wise enough to know, I feel this, but this is not the way I'm supposed to feel. So I got to go find somebody to help me because I will never build a meaningful connection with a worthy man as long as I feel this way. Like right now I have a, what they call a, bo a bone spur in this right shoulder, which is preventing me from doing some things in terms of exercising. Well, I didn't just settle with that pain, say, okay, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm just not going to do it. Mm -mm. I went to the doctor because I know enough about me. I have enough self-awareness to know I'm not supposed to feel this way. 
Now, so all of that to say, man, that was a long thing right there. All of that to say, meaningful connections, you have to be clear in your mind. They have to be built. I have about three points I want to make that build one on top of the other as it pertains to building meaningful relationships. Um, let me say out the gate, sex and finances are great fringe benefits in a relationship, but poor foundations. Sex and finances are great fringe benefits, but they make for poor foundations. Why are all of these relationships or many of these relationships today flunking, failing, and a lot of them that seem to be together for the optics are failing privately? It's because these, these so-called relationships were built on or somebody attempted to build these relationships on foundations of sex and or finances. A man marries a woman because she's fine and she turns him on and she don't have one ounce of queen or wife consciousness, only to, to discover, okay, I'll leave that alone. Woman marries a man because he has all the money in the world he can afford her, but he never learned to value her. It's because these things are great fringe benefits to a relationship, but they are poor foundations. And see, I know right now when you're not in a relationship, when you, when you really have not started to build a life with a person, it's easy to imagine that sex is going to be more important than it actually turns out to be. When you really get into the grips of building a life and building um, a kingdom with a, with a suitable king or queen, you're going to realize, man, sex is a, you know, it's a great benefit, exclusive benefit of being in a great relationship, marriage, to be specific, with the right person, but there are too many more important things that preoccupy your time. And then you begin to understand that the mistakes you made in the past were that you looked over all of these other things and you landed on sex and money as the foundation of your so-called relationships. Now you understand why that stuff couldn't work. Okay, let's let's look at these three things I have relative to building a meaningful connection with the right with the right person. Number person number one. Okay, here it is. I'll admit it. There must be attraction. Whenever I talk about type versus kind, you know, people all over the comments. I just can't be with nobody. I'm not attracted to. And I get it. You know, I get it. I am most attracted to my wife, have been all of our lives together. Ultimately, the nature of attraction, I hear this very clearly. I agree with you. You, you, you cannot build a meaningful connection with a person that you are not attracted to. Ultimately, the nature of attraction can vary greatly from person to person. Often, hear, hear this well, now open your ears, often reflecting where they stand in their personal growth and self-awareness. Let that, let that simmer. The way you discern a matter and what you're focused on 
what you're attracted to speaks to your maturity level. You see, there was a time, um, Paul put it this way, when I was a child, I spake like a child, behaved like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. There was a time, this same R.C. Blakes, if my mother brought me to the grocery store, the first thing I was attracted to was ice cream. That's what I was attracted to because I was a child. When I became um, a man, a young man, n n you know, not really understanding nutrition, didn't pay no attention to those folk in school, what they said, the first thing I would be attracted to would be pizzas and french fries. Now, as a much older, mature man that has gone through some things and is trying to preserve my life in the best way, now I'm looking for fruit and vegetables. You see what I'm saying? You got to be attracted, but what you're attracted to is really not a slight against the person necessarily that you say you're not attracted to as much as it is a reflection on your own maturity level. You see, when you grow up, what you're attracted to is going to change. See, like for some of you, the stuff you're attracted to that you call your type, you probably just need to go on fast on relationships because you didn't got your, you've gotten your type 15 times. And every time you come out with the same outcome and you have not grown one bit because you're still out here hanging around the ice cream aisle at 50 years old and with diabetes. But it's my type. Okay. Um, under this point, I put this relative to attraction. You got to be attracted. You're going to build a meaningful connection. Got to be attraction, right? I give you that. Now, I know you didn't expect me to go the way I went with it, but I went the way I went with it because it's the truth. Because there's letter A under point one, attraction. There's what I call base attraction, now, at this level, attraction often operates on a visceral plane, and it is driven by physical appearances or charisma. You know, as the saying goes, beauty is only skin deep, which suggests that such attractions are fleeting, Many of you that are listening to me now, you, you, your, your attractions are so uh, parochial, immature, childish. You're attracted to things that are fading away. The Bible puts it this way in Proverbs 31.30. This is why you can't build meaningful connections. Because, okay, let me read the text. Proverbs 31, 30 says, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So when, you, when I look at that verse, right, as a mature man, if I were to be in pursuit of a woman as a wife, which is the only reason I would ever be in pursuing any relationship would be to find a wife. I would, I understand from this level of maturity. Yeah. A woman may be extremely beautiful on the outside and a horror show on the inside. So I would be looking for the latter part of this verse. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. I'd be looking for a woman that fears the Lord over the woman's external because I understand that the external is a base attraction and it's changing all the time. Lisa and I have looked probably four different ways since we got married. 
but yet we grow more and more in love and in attraction to one another. Because when you think about, um, <sighs> when you think about this visible, physical attraction type thing, it's just a chemical reaction. And, and one of the key chemicals involved in sexual attraction is dopamine, often referred to as the feel-good neurotransmitter. So you see somebody that looks a certain way, smells a certain way, and there you get a shot of that dopamine, and you think that that's enough. Or another important chemical involved in sexual attraction is oxytocin, often called the love hormone or bonding hormone. When somebody says all of the right things or they get you into the bed and they know what to do in the middle of that bed. And now all of a sudden you think you are in love and it's just really a base attraction. It's not going to last. Overall, the complex interplay of neurotransmitters, hormones, and other chemical signals in the brain and body contributes to the experience of base sexual attraction and can influence our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors towards something we find appealing. That's all y'all talking about when you're talking about your type? is a sexual attraction. He ain't my type. He not my type. You haven't even had a conversation with the man. He not my type. All you're talking about is you want somebody to stir you up sexually, somebody that's going to talk you into another soul tie. Now, it's he says... However, it is important to note that while these chemical reactions play a role in sexual attraction, they should not solely determine our feelings towards another person as attraction is also influenced by psychological, spiritual, social, and cultural or cultural and values-based factors. Now, this emphasizes the idea that character and spiritual depth are to be valued above surface level attractiveness. So, yes, it is important to, uh, attraction is very important to developing a deep, meaningful connection the question that returns to you is on what level are you presently attracted? Because if you're only attracted on the physical, visible, sexual level, 98% of the time, you will never really develop a meaningful connection with anybody. You can be in the bed with somebody for 20 years and never have a connection. You just, see, because sex is like a drug. You're just addicted to the sex. Sometimes both of you are. And you don't even know one another. If you knew one another, you wouldn't even like one another. But because you started off with such a childish pursuit. When the goal is to build a connection, the wise woman understands that a lasting connection is not made in the hormones. A relationship must be greater than impulses. To attempt to make a connection with a person based on hormonal attraction would be as wise as seeing a used car for sale and giving the people your money Closing the deal based on the paint and the rims while never being concerned about the mileage or what's happening under the hood relative to the engine. 
A car is not a car because of pain and rims. A car is a car because of what's under the hood. So yeah, you got to be attracted, but you got to be attracted to more than paint and rims if you're going to develop a meaningful connection. I say it all the time. Lisa and I got married based on our shared perspective of a future. She said she did not want to marry a man that would not take his provisional responsibilities seriously because she did not want to bring children into a struggling environment. So when she chose me, it was based on the fact that she saw my grind, she understood my character. I chose her because God told me that's your wife. And when I prayed about it, I realized that she was perfect for my future. Wasn't the, wasn't the paint job in the rims, babe? Because, I mean, quite honestly, some of my family, it, they, they thought it was a joke. It was like, how you get a woman like that? Physically, I was way out of my league with my wife. My wife, a dime. Promise you, brand new one, too. Wasn't one of them, one of them old dusty-looking dimes. She was a dime. She is a dime till today. But when I first met my wife and we got together, a dime. And my family, oh, man, in the world you get a woman like that? Well, you know, it is what it is, homie. <laughs> but we we made those. She even told a story, which my, was my first time hearing it. I guess I need some therapy behind it. We was on Dear Future Wife and Podcast. And I had never heard this woman say this before didn't hurt my feelings because I understand, you know, how great relationships are built. That woman said on the Dear Future Wifey podcast, I was not her type. I was not her type, which only does what? speaks to everything I try to teach y'all on a weekly basis, sometimes a daily basis. There are things that are more important than what your eyes are attracted to, what your little hormones or your little immature, pubescent mind gravitates to. Bay, you gotta you gotta think, you gotta think deeper. You gotta think bigger. I wasn't her type, but she understood that I was her kind, that we were designed to go places together, places other than just the bed. Little people, you choose, and the only place you can go with them is the, to the bed. So I give it to you. Attraction is number one in terms of... Um, in terms of developing meaningful connections. So we, that was, we just looked at what? Base attraction. Now let's, let's look at a deeper attraction. So in contrast, much mature attraction arises when individuals look beyond the immediate carnal impulses and consider long-term foundational qualities. Now this type of, of attraction is captured by the idea that love is not about finding your type, but discovering your kind. It's not, it's not so much about what is on the outside, but what lies within. I got to say it because I already hear y'all. I'm not saying that you're supposed to go out here and find somebody that you think looks like a monster to you. That That's not the will of God for you, right? What I am saying to you is that you, you have to understand that there's more to a relationship than looks. Looks only last, only last for a certain p 
period of time, a very brief period of time at, at that, uh, for so long. You got you gotta get beyond the hang-ups about looks and you gotta you gotta go deeper. Find somebody that you don't mind looking at. They may not be the best looking, they may not be your type. Like I clearly wasn't Lisa's type. Bet you I'm a type not. <laughs> I'll let your boy, you know, you know me. Hallelujah. Watch this here. When we start talking about a deeper attraction, here's, here's what this kind of looks like. There are attractions that transcend looks and hormones or chemicals. These attractions are spiritual and cerebral. Letter A, spiritual harmony. That's, that's, that's something that people that are operating on a deeper level are attracted to when 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 um when you meet somebody that spiritually uh agrees with your spirit spiritually uh they feel like home for you um spiritually it's like god is saying yes the bible puts it this way in mark 10 and 9 what therefore here it is God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. So there's a, watch this, there's a, there's a connection that can be made with the person that God does. And God's connections are not based on sexual appeal or visual appeal. Those are carnal, um, you know, operations. God's connection is spiritual. So those whom God connects, let no man put asunder. And when God brings, when there's a spiritual attractiveness, when the two are brought together in the spirit, now you have a relationship that stands the test of time. And then let her be, you have emotional agreement where people that are looking for a deeper attraction. See, even if you you you, you pass, even if a person uh, has the, you're, you're physically attracted to the person, when you're wise, you still have to, you still have to have these deeper attractions because the person may be the sexiest person you've ever seen in, in your life, but there's no spiritual harmony or there's no emotional agreement. In other words, when we say emotional agreement, the person is healthy for your soul. You, they, they calm you. They disarm all of your triggers. You're attracted to the emotional agreement. Amos 3 and 3 says, can two walk together except they be what? Agreed. You see, when you have been run over, when a person has been run over by somebody who was everything, everything sexually, most beautiful person in the world, but yet they ran over you and destroyed you emotionally. A person that is emotionally safe then becomes a very attractive person. Now, the sad thing is when you, when you run over by a person, run over by a person, and then you get out of that situation, you go back and choose the same type of person, and you get the same type of treatment. And then you get out of that, and you go and choose the same type of person again and get the same type of treatment the third time. The wise person learns, and the wise person says, maybe I should stop diving in the low end of the pool because every time I dive in this end, I bust my head. Maybe I'll try diving in the deeper end this time. So when a person has gone through it and they finally find someone that's emotionally safe, that person becomes very, very, very attractive. And then let us see, uh, there's the person that becomes your intellectual mirror. See, these are deeper attractions. I know you, you thought the only attraction was sexual, physical, visible. No, there's spiritual, there's emotional, and, and, and there's intellectual. 
And when we say intellectual mirror, in other words, this is a person that gets your thinking. Doesn't necessarily mean that they have the same amount of education as you, because education is a it's a poor metric for in intelligence, quite honestly. In intelligence is, you know, well, let me not go off on that, but you get it. The two of you, you know, you're 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 there. You're on the same level. You can have hours and hours of conversation and never get tired. This person is your intellectual mirror. You learn from them, they learn from you. There's nothing worse than getting a person that has a, a beautiful, fabulous body and a dumb brain. Oh my goodness. I mean, they're just gorgeous, but you just just don't say nothing. Just anybody I've been there before? Man, I remember, you know, I had a girl that the girl was just gorgeous, but but when she started talking. Mm -mm. You um, you got me scratching. I'm itching. Mm -mm. Be quiet. Because there's an attraction that's beyond the physical. Intellect is attractive. Philippians 3.16 says, Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. And then letter D, which um, I, I got to give this, uh, whole phraseology, give my friend the Terrace Whitfield credit for purpose, purpose partner. When, when you do your due diligence and you really search out the soul of a person, if you search the soul of a person as much as you check out their body, many of you would discover that this person is a a narcissist, psychopath, long before you let them move into your house. But back to my point, when you search out the soul of a person and you discover that, you know, our personal visions, his vision, her vision, easily merge into something greater, that we are both going in the same direction. And it's easy for us to marry our vision and to create a family dynamic, there's nothing more attractive when you and a person share purpose. Okay, so now I'm taking too long. Number one is attraction. I only have three points. And then the next step in, in, in building um, a meaningful connection is compatibility. Compatibility. Discovering compatibility is a journey that unfolds over time and by intentional pursuit. See, most of you, when you say we're compatible, you just mean you're sexually attracted. I'm just putting it out there. Even though some of y'all that's in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, we're compatible. You just mean we're sexually attracted to one another. That does not mean you're compatible. It's important to recognize that attraction does not guarantee compatibility. You're not compatible with most of the people you've been attracted to. You know, just call up Samson out the Bible. Samson and Delilah. Samson was attracted to her, and that woman got his eyes put out, got him fired from his purpose, got him imprisoned, made a slave. That woman stripped him of everything, though he was attracted to her. Look, look at it in Judges 16. Attraction does not mean compatibility. Delilah was his type, but she wasn't his kind. Compatibility involves aligning on core values, beliefs, and life goals. Compatibility is discovered through extensive discourse and not impulsive intercourse.
Had to take a little coffee break on that one. Some of y'all missed it. Oh, did he say what I was he, let, me, let me repeat it then. Compatibility is discovered through extensive discourse and not impulsive intercourse. Have you noticed that you spend more time in the bed with this man than y'all do in conversation? First Kings chapter 10 in verse 1. Let's let's take some lessons from a queen. Huh? This is this is the this is the queen conscious community, right? We are raising royal consciousness around the world over here. So let's take some let's take some let's take some some instruction from a queen. In first Kings 10 and 1 and said 10 and 1 it says, and when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord. That's where the attraction happened. She came to prove him with hard questions. She came to see if the things that were said about him were true, but she came to prove him with what? Hard questions. See, you can't, you have to discover if you're compatible with a person. And you, you can only discover if you're compatible with a person to the extent you explore their soul. You, you ask them questions, you listen to their answers, and then you watch their life. That's how you discover. You have to discover if you're compatible with a person. Compatibility is also about finding harmony in differences because sometimes we, we think compatibility means we, we like all the same stuff. No, it does not. No, 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 no. Compatibility sometimes means that you're the yin to my yang. I'm the yang to your yin, right? Where I'm weak, you're strong. Where... I'm strong, you're weak. So my weaknesses are, you know, um, empowered by your strengths. Your weaknesses are empowered by my strengths. We, In other words, we know that we're compatible because compatibility, our compatibility makes us Better together. Better together. The compatibility test will require a person who balances your weaknesses with their strength, and you do likewise for them. This can only be realized by observation. The dating process demands the participation of your brain to discern compatibility. See, the, the base levels of attraction is just your hormones involuntarily just kicking in. But to discover compatibility requires the participation of your brain. Just because two people are attracted does not mean they are compatible. Compatibility speaks to the two possessing the power to improve each other's life. Look what the Bible says in Genesis 2.18. The Lord God said, and this is the New International Version of the Bible, says, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him compatible to him. How do we know that one is compatible to me? That the person that is, a person that is compatible to you will be able to help you. Not only does the woman help the man, the man also helps the woman. The two help each other when they are compatible. 
And the Bible puts it this way in Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So we have, I'm taking too long on this. So we have the beginnings of a meaningful connection or attraction. Then we have compatibility. Now we have connection. Attraction, compatibility, connection. While attraction is largely involuntary and compatibility is discovered, connection is a decision. I pause like that because I want you to think about what I just said. While attraction is largely involuntary, you know, we are attracted to who we're attracted to. Now, it's up to us to choose to go deeper or not, right? But attraction is largely involuntary. Compatibility is discovered. I discover that we are compatible. But connection is decisive. Two people decide to connect. There will be there will be people you will be compatible with that you will never make a connection with. Because connection is the deliberate and conscious choice to invest in a relationship with another person. Connection is, 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 is a choice. It's a decision. It, it goes beyond mere attraction and it goes beyond compatibility to a deeper level called commitment. Connection is about saying, I choose you. This is why I have a problem with women that just tolerate men that run through your bed, wear your body out, and, and can never tell you, can never define what the relationship is. And then come with all this BS about, you know, uh, marriages greater than paper. You, we don't need to go down there with the government involved in our business. And I agree with you. The paper does not make a marriage, but I, I, I'll also submit to you, if a person, if a man really views you as his wife, he ain't going to have no problem with the paper. It's a lot of BS because connection is about decision. It's about decisiveness. And any man that's up in your life, eating up all your years, wearing your body out and all of this kind of stuff and can't make a decision to say, this is what we are. This is where we're going. It's about saying, two people saying, I choose you. And meaning it in every aspect of life. Connection is about mutual choice. You don't even have a connection if you if if you are honest saying, well, you love, you love him or you love her. And, and he ain't loving you back, she ain't loving you back. You ain't got no connection. That ain't no connection. A connection requires both parts coming together in unison, making a decision where there is mutual buy-in, where, where there's mutual prioritization of each other, where there is an exclusive, where there's an exclusive relationship from his end to your end, your end to his end. That's when you have a connection. And to get to connection, we got to build to connection. There has to be attraction. Hopefully it's, it's deeper than the base attraction. You go and you look at the other things, the spiritual, the emotional, the intellectual, the purpose. Right? Right? compatibility, then we get to a place called connection. And then I, I love what the Bible says here. And uh, da, 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 da. You, you know you got a connection. 
Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. You know you got a connection when your union produces greater fruit. When you're down, you lift one another up. We're connected. See, there are a lot of y'all that's in these situationships, you're having sex. You may have even, you know, had a wedding. But you ain't had a marriage until y'all connected. And connecting requires a mutual respect, a mutual understanding, a mutual declaration. When Lisa and I first got married, we literally had the conversation. There will be no divorcing. We are going to do whatever it takes. We're going to respect one another. We're not going to cheat on one another. We have, we have disagreements. We're going to work it out. If we can't work it out, we're going to find somebody to help us to work it out because we were what? Connected. But you got to build to that. Most of y'all waiting on these microwave relationships. And you're not, you're failing to understand that great relationships are built. You know, like a lot of you ladies that to my way, you know, he got to, he got to have this, he got to have that. And you don't want to build with a man. You don't even know what you're missing, man. My wife got in there and she built with me. She built with me, man. When 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 a, when a woman finds the right man that has all of the internals that he that she would need him to have for her to trust him and they build together, there's a love that that man has for that woman that will never be able to be duplicated by any other means other than the history. When a man can look up and say, man, my, my woman got in there and built with me. There's no way in the world I would be R.C. Blakes if it were not for Lisa Blakes. You got to understand the, the, that meaningful connections are built. They don't just happen. Okay, I've talked way, 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 way too long. I hope you all got something out of this today. My prayer for you is that wisdom has come and knocked at your door and prayerfully you've opened the door to entertain it. Now, don't forget to go by rcblakes.com, sign up for my mailing list. You will get all of my uh, weekly, I try to send out every week, at least once a week. I try to send out something for you to ponder, something inspirational empowering, informational, as well as you'll get all of the emails relative to when we're coming live or what have you. Sign up for the mailing list. Uh, don't forget to go to the description and look for the Better Help Counseling link. The Better Help Counseling link for those of you that may need counseling for what, for whatever. You know, Lisa and I are not counselors. Um, but if you use that BetterHelp counseling link, it'll afford you 10% off of the cost of their counseling. And they, in turn, because I recommended them, they will make a deposit into R.C. Blake's Ministries. Uh, while you're at rcblakes.com as well, check out the online program, Transcending the Father Wound. That program is changing the lives of women and men. It's not just for women. And men, it's changing the lives of men and women around the world who are struggling with the father wound. Go and check that out at rcblakes.com. Thanks to all of you who have sown into our lives. Lisa and I love you with all of our hearts. We really, really do. And we appreciate you so much. Um, Amazon has all of my books. Go there and support the ministry in that way. We are looking forward. June is, is quickly approaching. We are looking forward to meeting all of you that are coming with us to Egypt in June. It's going to be amazing 
to spend that time in person with many of you and to spend that time discovering Egypt together. Uh, also in July, in July, they are celebrating my 60th birthday. Can you believe that I'm turning 60 years old? They're celebrating my 60th birthday in the city of New Orleans at the Ritz Carlton. I don't know how many tickets are yet available, but if it's something you'd like to come and be a part of in the city of New Orleans, go to rscblakes.com and you as well can find, I think the information for getting the ticket is there as well to celebrate my 60th. And of course, in August, we will see you all in, in Atlanta, Georgia for Queenology 2024. Going to be absolutely amazing. Now listen, I love you with all of my heart. I love you with all of my heart from all around the world. But you know what I need y'all to do today? If you, if you love me back, if you love me back, I don't know how we have as many people in our sessions and I can't get y'all to like uh, I just, maybe maybe you don't really like it. I don't know. All it is is a matter of Xing out and hitting the like thing for you. That's all you gotta do. Oh, you leave, X out, hit the like, you know, X out of the comments and the like thing will sh hit the thing. All right, well, I'll tell you anyway, even though I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat salty right now. You're on top, you're going higher. God has more in store for you. So Lisa and I, we will see you at the top. God bless you. Until next time. We here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. Time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.
life inside Nine months she's carrying Back to work cause the family she's carrying Society don't give her her just due But she prevails and stand tall A champion, a true woman Oh!